were delighted to find that there was a programme called First World War then and now. The local community in Hoyk and across the borders were wanting to let people know a lot more about Stobbs camp, both as a military training camp, but particularly as a prisoner of war camp during the First World War. Not only are we going to build an archaeological record of the remains at Stobbs, we've got Borders Family History Centre where they are tracing genealogy of many of the people who were involved in the camp. I think this has made me look at some of my research techniques quite differently. There's so much to learn and it's not so very long ago this was part of living memory. It's not now. We're the first generation where we don't have that privilege. This first sort of tranche of money has helped us develop a much bigger project that will go on right through till June 2019 and put Stobbs Camp on the global map. We decided to apply for a Heritage Lottery grant because the way that we learn about the First World War in Britain today is that it was a European war between nations and not an international war between empires and that leaves out a lot of really important stuff that was happening, including the involvement of South Asian soldiers. And what we've been doing over the past year is going to institutions like the Imperial War Museum and the National Army Museum and doing research in the archives. We've got older members of the community here at the Asian Centre to come in and make collages. We've also been making short films, which have helped us explore like what it might actually have been like to be a South Asian soldier. And we've been able to have children's events what has changed since uh, we started the project is my view on First World War. It was not only France, Germany, it was much more broader. We've been pulling all of that research together and we're about to have an exhibition in the Royal Geographical Society. The young people came up with the inspiration for us to apply for the Heritage Lottery Fund. They wanted to look at local people uh, who served in the First World War and what that meant to them. The application process at the beginning was quite nerve-wracking. We had lots of help from the Heritage Lottery and it was very simple. We've been involved in lots of different activities from children developing an app in ICT to visits to the battlefields and to the remembrance area in Ypres. I am the first family member to visit my great grandfather's grave since the war ended. It is really emotional for me. The flow of the project has given them lots of skills in IT, history, English, creative arts and music. I was working in Brighton at the time they filmed Oh What a Lovely War on the now lost West Pier and I thought it would be interesting to do a project that looked into Brighton and the Sussex coast's history of entertainment and entertaining the troops. Having the grant meant that I could put together a touring display with some museum partners and tell these hidden stories to people who might not have realised the, the underlying backstory to Oh What A Lovely War. The thing I've enjoyed the most about the project is that I get to spend hours of my time looking through amazing footage and surround myself in something that I love. In 1916 was a very important period in Ireland, not just because of the First World War, but also because 1916 was the year of the Easter Rising. We became aware of a local family, the Corps, who had played a significant part in those events. The Corps family had a number of uh, important artefacts from the period. So what the, what the Heritage Lottery Fund grant enabled us to do was to take this archive and use that to create an exhibition. I decided to take part in the project because I felt that it was a relevant bit in our history and I felt that it was necessary for younger people to get involved in it and we should learn more about what actually happened. This could have been very much a local story. Because of the support we had through the Heritage Lottery Fund, I think we were able to bring this story to a much wider audience. The War Memorial in Harriton Parish was just outside our front window. It seemed a, a natural thing to do, to start investigating the names on that War Memorial. It was all about putting the information out into the community. We have made three films. We have put 100 bronze resin poppies across Washington and created a walk. A phone app is uh, currently near completion. And then it's been about exhibitions. 
Well, since I've taken part, I've had even more respect for these men. War Memorial now is not just a list of names. Because of the money that we've been able to spend from the lottery, we've enhanced the interest and we've been able to inform people. The advice that I would give to other organisations that were thinking about doing a First World War project would be to be really creative, but also kind of experimental about what you can do. I think my advice to anyone still wishing to do a First World War project is go for it. You've got nothing to lose.